take a look, say, at another area of the cooling tower, such as a lot of algae that's uh, coating the, what we call the internal portion of it, and that's fill, in this case, flash fill. Uh, why is algae a bad consideration? Uh, it's because it can harbor things like Legionella bacteria, it has food source, of course, for, for uh, uh, all types of other bacteria. Uh, it can plug up uh, sprays and what have you. However, it may increase a cooling tower efficiency uh, if it's using splash fill. Would you say, how can that happen? Well, it can happen because you have greater surface area, so you actually will get not only splash benefit, but the film type effect on top of, uh, of the algae deposits. What you need to do to be able to control this type of situation is to maybe add the biocide to the cooling tower return water so it is actually going over the top of the tower and down through the tower, and you must maintain a residual through that fill if you're using an oxidant, at least a half a ppm of free oxidant, or if you use a non-oxidizing biocide, uh, you can use a, a weekly or until it, all the algae has disappeared and then maintain it free. So here's a good example of that type of thing. It's a splash fill. You don't really interfere in the efficiency because you have the splash bars anywhere from three to six to eight inches or maybe even a foot apart, so you never have a total plugage of that particular system, but you do have, uh, it looks bad, number one, the plant manager would not like to see it, and probably the worst thing is that if you see algae, chances are you've got some Legionella bacteria present there too. So keep those in mind that you want to try to eliminate that with good water treatment program. Another area that we should deal with, of course, is again the internal portion of the cooling tower, and that's where their high-density film pack fill. Uh, if you get uh, this very high-density film pack fill plugged, it will restrict the water flow and therefore reduce the tower efficiency, and even it can build up enough weight within that particular fill to collapse it into the tower basin. We've seen that happen a number of times. Frequently, you can't see it too easily because it's normally within inside that uh, film pack fill, and I'll show some examples of that in just a second, uh, it, and it, was, it looks like it's okay if you look from underneath it. If you look at the top, it looks like it's okay, but internally it could be loaded with uh, biomass and biofilm, and we usually find that it is the biological organisms that are using the, it's the glue that's holding together uh, even suspended materials that get into the cooling tower. You need to add a good biocide and a good dispersion to the return water to the cooling tower to make sure that you have good oxidant being positive out of the fill so that you actually will prevent that biomass from building up. Hydrogen peroxide has been used extensively in this type of thing, not only cleaning up offline, but even utilizing it during online cleaning, and that seems to have worked quite well. So that could be considered as a possible way of working up with either dispersants as well as hydrogen peroxide and good biocides. Here's the examples of the followed film pack fill. This happens to be from a utility power plant, and you can see on the left one uh, and even the right side uh, of, the, um, of the slide that at the top of the, um, of the fill actually it's pretty clean, partly because if you've got any biocide, et cetera, that you normally utilize, it'll react at the top and keep that clean and it'll be dissipated and gone, and then down further it'll start accumulating, and eventually it might accumulate to the point where it's all the way down to the bottom, though sometimes even the bottom has got where well, there's a lot of air and uh, water intermixing and turbulence might keep that a little bit clean and give you an incorrect understanding that if you look at the bottom and look at the top, you say, oh, they're pretty clean. You've got to get internally to be able to see what's happening within that particular fill. Here's another example of how much buildup can occur in this type of fill to the point where it restricts water. Uh, it not only contaminates uh, the heat exchanges with biomass, et cetera, but, but it really reduces the efficiency of the cooling tower and uh, it can harbor any type of biological organisms, including Legionella. Here's an example of a high-density film fill, clean, brand new. Uh, it's usually a one foot uh, by one foot by four feet long, and that particular fill, when it's uh, even damp uh, but clean, will weigh about 20, 20 pounds. We've actually had cooling towers where it's weighed over 200 pounds because of the accumulation of biomass and suspended solids scale and corrosion products. So you have to be careful that you examine that, make sure that you've got 
proper water treatment program, particularly the biocides, and uh, to keep that particular clean, even if you have to go in and clean it up uh, manually. And this time it's uh, taking it out of, this, out of the tower itself. Unfortunately, uh, high pressure water would tend to uh, uh, break it down. Either that or if uh, you could use a, a low fouling film fill, which is a spray true, it's a lot easier to clean. 